spawning in the bottom left position as our green Protoss player. He went for the gateway expand and then died to Mass Mutalisk. He is Roxas Frere. And spawning in the top right position as the yellow Zerg. Winning with the, the excellent Mutalisk play to finish the final set, the first game of the set. It is Caronte Esports Club's Vortex. So this is a map famous for two-base play. And to be honest, Frere seems like the kind of guy that likes two-base play. We saw this a lot in the match against Alive, where he went for the four-gate push, the expand into four-gate, the other four-gate, the... Uh, I don't even know what else to call it. The four-gate into Blink, into Dark Templar. It was... Uh, Frere is a really, really aggressive player. And I wouldn't be surprised if he went for more aggression this game. However, it looks like he will be going for a fast expand with the Forge, most likely. He has that pylon placed in the low ground. His probe's going to come in. Um, Vortex might have considered going for something like a 15 hatch against a gateway expand. Um, maybe just because he said, okay, well, you can't cannon rush me or anything like that. Um, but no such, no such thing is going to happen this game. He might still try to get the fast hatchery, though. He has the minerals. Okay, now he's going to get the pool first. Very smart. 15 pool. Um, it's a pretty safe way to play. And this also lets Frere know that he can Nexus first if he wants to as well. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just did that, got a Nexus at 15 supply. Yep, he has the minerals banked. He's moving his probe over there. He doesn't need to open with a forge when you have a spawning pool this um, this late. Drone's going to be shoving this probe away. He says, hey, get out of my house. Um, and the Nexus is on the way. So, yeah. This is going to follow up in a pretty standard uh, forge. Should go down next for Frere. He wouldn't surprise me if he tried to get a gateway, but that's a really, really risky play to make. So most likely be forge, then gateway, then cannon. And there we have the forge begun now. Pylon blocked the natural, uh, cancels it, forces that probe, to, the drone actually go build a third. And Frere is actually aware of this, so that's pretty nice. He's He has a statistical advantage in terms of information, um, I have to say, but... We have the gateway not yet started. He moved that probe back a little bit much, I think. Um, second pylon's done, and he's going to, there you go, boom, gateway. So he's got a nice wall set up. Uh, Vortex sees this, realizes, okay, this looks like a pretty good Nexus first timing. Um, and we have Photon Cannon being produced. And a gas is going to be taken by Vortex, which is very interesting. He actually hasn't taken his, uh, his regular natural hasher yet. Um, gas is going to finish up now, and this should be, this should be, I'm, I'm, hmm, he's, now he's going to take it. The, the probe sees him that he's just taken it, though. So this is awkward, and the Zerglings are trying to squeeze in and kill that probe and get through. He kills the probe, but, uh, the cannon finishes, so the Zerglings won't be able to just rush on in there. Um, gateway is almost done, and we have the double gas in the main base for Frere, so he's following this up about as normal a way as you could, um, he has the gateway complete. She's our cybernetic score. And we have a Roach Warren on the way for Vortex. So this could be uh, some big aggression coming up. Typically, you want to drone up and then get your tech so that you can put on aggression. But he scouted that it was a Nexus first into Forge. So he knows that he's not going to... Excuse me. That's a hiccup. So he's not, he knows he's not going to be attacked. But he sees this as an opportunity to maybe put pressure back on Freyr after the aggression he went for in the early uh, in the first game. This is, this is interesting. Six Roaches are on the way. Um, Overlord spotting. Uh, and this looks pretty standard. Plus one attack, though, pretty early. So this won't be a Stargate build coming out of Frere. Uh, this is most likely going to be Robotics Facility. Uh, which, which will actually favor him versus the Roach play. Stargate play is very popular in Korean meta, but uh, Frere... Oh, no, it's going to be Twilight. That's interesting. So what he's going to do with this Twilight Council, and if Twilight Council actually, the Twilight Council actually feels a little bit early, but um, he's going to he's going to get the Twilight Council so he can go for plus two attack very quickly and most likely blink. Um, so he should be chrono boosting plus one a lot. Um, generally, that's like the strongest build that we see here. It could still be some kind of zealot timing with a plus one, um, but there's no robotics facility, so he won't be able to get a warp prism or anything, which is why which is why I feel that way. And then we have these roaches, six of them, a seventh one on the way couple more coming from the top side gonna try to put some pressure on there's only a single stalker to defend here this cannon though should be in range to stop this but you know what 
the build that he went for, there's no sentries. He actually can he actually can't stop these roaches from just moving on in, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. If he snaps his photon cannon, this game can be over right now, ladies and gentlemen. The cannon is down, the probes are fighting the roaches. This is not a fight you want to take ever, not in a million years. There's the GG from Frere realizes, hey man, that was a bit greedy on my part. And uh, Vortex takes a quick, quick 2-0. So, wow, uh, really nice play out of Vortex. He's, he's really manhandling. He is really manhandling uh, a Freya right now. Ouch. Oh, I didn't even update my starboard on the score. My apologies. Vortex is up 2-0 now. Well, we are going to have to uh, see what, what Freya can do. Is this going to be a quick 3-0 to end our matches for the day? Or will Freya be able to come back? Um, stay tuned.